Hello everybody and welcome to my unboxing video for GMT Games Tri-Pack Guilford Courthouse Saratoga and Brandywine. Um, thing to note, uh, Guilford Courthouse actually includes Utah Springs too, the Battle of Utah Springs, um, which actually I live in Charleston, South Carolina, so Utah Springs is not far from here. and. Um, it does include the uh, the famous partisan General Francis Marion, which if you've ever seen the movie The Patriot, uh, Mel Gibson's character is in part based off of Francis Marion. In the game, his counter is listed as a Swamp Fox. Let's go ahead and open the pack here. Now, Sarantoga and the Battle of Brandywine were going on roughly about the same time. Guilford Courthouse in Utah Springs, much later in the war. All right, let's see what we got here. <clears throat> um, a box split. I enjoy GMT games, but that's one thing uh, that happened with my uh, Peloponnesian War game. The box split on me. Give me one second. Let's take a look. Now, this is the generic rule book. For all three games. Let's take a look. Got some really nice color graphics in the rule book. This is always a big sequence of play. Alright, let's try to see what else we got in here. Alrighty. Examples of zone of control, movement. One thing I noticed about the rule book, it is relatively short. However, each individual game has a separate set of rules that are unique to that game, which must be a bear to have to remember all the individual rules. All right, let's see what else we got in here. Okay. First up is the Brandywine exclusive rule book. Brandywine, of course, when the British Army crossed the, the river to get to Philadelphia upstream. Surprising George Washington. I'm surprised that Brandywine and Germantown weren't in a pack together. Those battles are always synonymous with each other. Hmm. And it does have the famous commanders in here. Artillery pieces. All right, let's see. Uh, love the artwork. Of course, I always love paintings from the American Revolutionary War era. All right. Uh, let's see what's the next one here. Saratoga. General Gates, Benedict Arnold, trapping old, uh, let's see, Burgoyne. And there's old Horatio Gates himself. It's said that when he lost the Battle of Candom, he was running faster than his army. <laughs> and George Washington got to replace him with the man he really wanted, which is Nathaniel Green. This is some of the leader counters. Victory conditions. Okay. Alrighty, this is my this is my favorite here. Go for courthouse in Utah Springs. Mm, 
this thing there's someone there there he goes the swamp fox Francis Marion I grew up in a town not far from here where half the things in the town were named after Francis Marion the swamp fox and I actually have a um, I read his biography in college it's a very interesting work he was actually a French Huguenot, Francis Marion. Him and uh, I believe Moultrie was a French Huguenot as well. A sample of the counters. If you're looking for a if you're looking for a biography of Francis Marion, and this is a great read. It's written in the uh, essence of the time period. Uh, it's an old biography. It's been around for a while by Robert Bass. Um, but it's a great read. You run into characters like Light Horse Harry Lee, which is, of course, General Lee's, uh, Robert E. Lee's uh, father. Um, estranged father, I guess you could say. Um, the Gamecock, Thomas Sumter, which I didn't see him in the, in the Utah Springs or the... Uh, I think he had retired by that point by Guilford Courthouse in, uh, in uh, Utah Springs. That's uh, Nathaniel Green, his famous quote, We fight, get beat, rise, and fight again. Awesome quote. Let's see. Here's old Marion. The Swamp Fox, named by Banaster Tarleton. He called him that because he was chasing him and he retreated into the swamp and Tarleton couldn't follow him. And um, he gave him the nickname the Swamp Fox and it just stuck. Uh, let's see here. This is some of the counter, unit counters. This is the Saratoga units. Alright. Take a look. And this is the brandy wine. This is your Hessians, some of your leaders, General Howe, old GW, see if he's in here. Sullivan, that was a controversial general during the Revolutionary War. I think it might have been John Adams who wished that the first shot of the Battle of New York could have killed Sullivan, but here's George Washington. And the Marquis de Lafayette. Another favorite character for the Revolutionary War. And this is the Guilford Courthouse in Utah Spring. There's Green. Let's see, they got some of the other famous characters. There's Light Horse Harry Lee. And old Benasta Tarleton. Now in the uh, Mel Gibson movie, they renamed him Tavington. Because they kind of merged some of the stories together between Thomas Sumter, uh, Francis Marion, and Andrew Pickens. Let's see. There, of course, is uh, Hampton. Oh, there's Sumter. They got him in the game here. Alrighty, let's see here. Some additional counters. Oh, yeah, this. Alrighty, let's see. This is your reinforcement replacement sheets here. Some of the different charts. 
know anything about GNT games, they do have some charts on them. <laughs> Of course, the back side, and I imagine this opens up. Alrighty. Close comeback, tactical matrix, defense roll modifiers, range fire to hit. There's a difference between rifleman and uh, musket fire in this game, which, if you think about the Battle of Saratoga, Dan Morgan's riflemen were. Definitely vicious. Home on Borgoing. That is, this is also brandy wine. See, the back is also. Sussy brandy wine. And let's see, the terrain effects. The first game I ever played that had terrain effects on movement was 1776 by the old Avalon Hill Company. And I thought that was the coolest thing that the terrain actually slowed down your movement in the game. Alrighty. Okay, let's see. It's still brand new wine. Here goes the Saratoga stuff. Okay. Uh, the battle that brought the French into the Revolutionary War. Saratoga. Okay, let's see. This is also a Saratoga chart. I'm assuming it's one for each side to use. Player aid. Same thing on both charts here. And, of course, Guilford Courthouse. Utah Springs. Huh. Well, I recognize a lot of these names. Especially Santee. So I live not far from the Santee River. <laughs> okay. There's the Army Morale Matrix there. Alright, of course, there's always the fun part the maps. I'm going to open these up right quick. Okay, I got the first map open. And it is Utah Springs on one side and Guilford Courthouse on the other. It's a game turn track, terrain. Of course, you got the Santee River here. We'll back up so you can see the whole map. Yeah, it's like a little area, housing area here. Let's see. Hey, Monk's Corner Road. I am not far from Monk's Corner. <laughs> In the Wausau's. Alright. And of course, the Santee Swamp. I imagine Marion's coming out of there. <laughs> Alright, so let's flip this over and check out the Guilford Courthouse. Oh yes, yeah, so and one more thing. The original South Carolina flag. Okay, on the opposite side of the Utah Springs map, we have the Guilford Courthouse map. Army morale. Guilford Courthouse. Nathaniel Green seemed like his strategy was not necessarily to defeat Cornwallis, but to sort of attrition him, wear him down. The Battle of Guilford Courthouse, Cornwallis had to fire artillery on even his own men because they were so in close quarters. He was afraid of a line breaking, so he fired on both his men and the uh, Continental Army. I guess desperate times for him, but uh, still pretty cold hearted. Uh, let's check out the other map. Okay, we've got the Saratoga map set up. 
see the Hudson thick wooded area which the battle took place which were going and getting surrounded Benedict Arnold was insubordinate towards Gates but that's like a rattlesnake being insubordinate to a scorpion you know <laughs> but uh, anyway and this is this map we're gonna flip it over and check out the brand new wine which kind of excited I would like I said I might get the Germantown one but that and I think the Monmouth one is the one I really want as well Monmouth is one of my favorites um, just because uh, how George Washington dismissed Charles Lee. <laughs> it's one of the most colorful scenes in the American Revolution. So. All right, on the flip side of the Saratoga map, we had the Brandywine map. I'm actually looking at it from the wrong way here, but. Okay, and then of course in the box and the tactical cards Okay, this is reminiscent of 1776 in some ways where different battle tactics gave you different results toward the dice and of course we have the dice here and it's really nice at GMT. They always give you the bags. I really like that. Um, and of course, I'll show you the back side of the box here. Probably should have show you that before we started, but solitaire ability really high, which I like. It is hard to find anybody to play these games with. Uh, and complexity is about medium to low. Which if you're these games are kind of short. I mean, I haven't played it yet, but I, you know, I get the sense these games aren't super long games. You know, something you could play in a day. And uh, if you're a beginner, this is a good game to start with. You know, got sort of the simple mechanics, fun to play. If you're a history buff, which I think most people who play in this hobby are, it's a great way to learn your history and have a fun time as well. But anyway, that's my unboxing video. I know it's a little amateurish. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Have a wonderful day.